Hey guys, welcome back. So right now I am standing on top of our pond dam and there's a lane that comes down the dam and it leads back through this opening in the trees to our three acre hay field. Now that opening is just big enough for us to be able to fit our hay equipment through and get to the hay field. So in fact, this set of double trees right there sticks out and we always have to drive around it to get through. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna cut those tr two trees down. We're gonna widen the lane leading back there so it's a lot easier to drive back. Now we do have a problem is there's some big trees near it and their limbs come out in front of it. So I, I really can't drop these two trees. I can't drop them right down here on the lane. They'll get caught up in the other trees. So the only way I think I can fell them without them getting hung up is I'm gonna to have to drop them back this direction toward the pond. So a little bit of the tree may land in the pond. Hopefully it's just the top of the tree, not very much, and we'll be able to just drag it back out. But let's go ahead, fire the chainsaw back up, and we'll start cutting uh, this double tree right there down. So I knew when I cut that forked limb that it was gonna fall. And I figured it was either gonna fall down or to the side. So I figured standing behind it was the safest place because uh, if it did go backwards, it would probably only go backwards maybe a foot or two. So I figured that was the safest place for me to stand. And when it fell, it ended up taking my chainsaw with it. it ended up pinching the blade. So instead of trying to tug on that and try to get it out, that's just gonna stretch your chain or bend your bar. So. Uh, I'm just gonna get my other chainsaw, we'll, we'll cut that out, we'll get it unpinched. 
Now, if you don't have an extra chainsaw and this happens to you, you should always keep an extra bar and an extra chain. You're always gonna have to end up replacing it at some time, so you might as well have them on hand. You can take the, the bolts loose and take the motor off, leave the bar and chain in the piece of wood, slap on your new bar and chain, and then cut your chainsaw out. So if you end up where you can't afford a second chainsaw, at least always have a second bar and chain um, so you can cut your bar back out if you get it pinched. While I was cutting the log up, I was marking it every 18 inches for firewood. Um, this is hickory here, it's gonna make nice firewood. And um, I was using a woodcutter's helper to be able to mark it consistently. So this has just got a magnet on the side. It, it, it magnetizes to the bar of the chainsaw. Uh, it's got a visual disc where you can put in your, near your last cut so you know where to make the, the next cut. It's just a nice simple indicator. And um, there's several of these out there. You can make something similar to this fairly cheaply. Um, the reason I like this one is because it is adjustable. I've got it set at 18 inches right now and I can slide it over uh, down the, the rod and I can move the disc and I can set it at 20 inches and cut 20 inch firewood or 16 inch. So it is adjustable. Um, you just buy it, I think, for the maximum length. Um, if you don't want it to stick out very far, you can buy a shorter one. I think this one is a 20 or 22 inch long uh, woodcutter's helper. So one of the cats came out and he wants to crawl on the tree that I just cut down. So. I doubt he'll hang around very long once I start firing the chainsaw back up. So when that jammed, I ended up with a piece of wood jammed in my bar. And uh, I've got this hook that I made. It's real thin and it just fits in the track. So let's see if we can pry that out of there. There we go. So I got the last tree all cut up into firewood and then all the limbs and brush I've got over here right now, but I'm going to probably cut that into smaller pieces and try to make a brush pile in the woods when we're done. So the next thing I'm going to do, go ahead and cut down the other tree and I'm going to try to see if I can get it to fall pretty much in the same spot as the last one.
Would you look at that? That ended up being almost perfect. My back notch was perfectly flat with the front notch. I don't think I've ever got it perfectly lined up before. Ran out of gas, switch saws now. So the Husqvarna ran out of gas right at the end of limbing this tree. So I switched to the steel and I started cutting it up with that. But the bar is so long on that saw, it is so easy to get it into the dirt. And I've got it into the dirt twice. I hate doing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead. The bar is just way too long. 25 inch bar is way too long to try to cut up a tree this size. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, gas the Husqvarna back up, get this cut into firewood. You know, anytime you do something, it's Murphy's Law, that always something goes wrong. So, the next problem we got is this. Let me show you. As soon as I put on the safety brake here, um, the chainsaw dies immediately. So, what that is, I probably have a broken spring in the clutch. I've had that happen before. Um, it's fairly easy to fix, but... I don't have any on hand, I don't think. So I'll have to just go ahead, switch back to the big saw, and we'll get this finished up with the uh, with the steel. So I got that limb all cut up into firewood now. And uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get this stump. We're gonna try to cut it off as close to the ground as possible. I don't want anything sticking up to catch on any of the farm equipment when we drive by. So I'll do my best to try to keep the chainsaw out of the dirt, but I'm gonna to try to keep it really close to the ground.
So I got the stump cut off right at the ground and I didn't get my chainsaw in the dirt. It, uh, it was close. I had to pull some dirt back just to prevent that from happening, but I'm um, pretty happy with how low I've got that stump down. So now that it's gone, I, I've got a pretty good opening to the, to the hay field back here. That's going to help out quite a bit. I bet you that's given me, oh, I bet you that's given me three, four feet of extra space to be able to pull through here. So uh, even though I got the tree all cut down, I've still got quite a bit of mess here that I need cleaned up. I've got a pretty good sized brush pile here behind the camera that you can't see. I've got a little bit down here at the dam. And then I've got all this stuff that I cut up for firewood that'll need to go back to the woodshed. But, uh, you know, when I drove back here today with the truck, I ended up retting up the yard pretty good. Um, we just had like eight inches of snow that, that melted this week and went right into the ground. So the ground is completely just soggy. And, uh, yeah, if I keep driving back and forth here, I'm just going to tear it up even worse. So I don't want to, I'm going to leave this firewood here for now and wait for the, it not to be so muddy to haul it to the wood pile. Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this brush pile here. I'll probably, I want, I mean, I wanna cut it up so it's smaller, so I can pack it in tighter and make like a denser brush pile. Um, that'll be, I'm sure that'll, that'll help wildlife if I'm gonna leave a brush pile out here for wildlife to make it as dense as possible. So uh, I may come over here. There's still more trees on the backside of the dam here. I may come and clear a little spot, some of these trees, and then just make a brush pile wherever I clear. And uh, I may save that for another day. Well, I know I'm gonna save that for another day. So Rebecca has uh, some of her family's coming over this afternoon. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up my tools, head back to the house and get cleaned up myself and uh, spend the rest of the day just hanging out. So I think that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.